In our final video on cell structure, we'll be completing our discussion on the endomembrane system. And this final flowchart of this lecture will be entitled EMS4. EMS4. And we're going to be devoting our time just to one last organelle. And that last organelle is known as the vacuole. The vacuole is a part of our endomembrane system. It is a large vesicle that comes from the ER and Golgi. So the vacuole is usually considered a large vesicle originating um, from the ER and also the Golgi. Once again, I want to emphasize that we see a theme here, and this vesicle is a theme of the endomembrane system. Vesicles are membrane-bound structures that help interconnect our system of endomembrane structures so that we can communicate intracellularly. Just understand that there is a whole process going on behind this so that the cell can communicate with itself effectively. Vesicles are a great way to utilize our endomembrane system. Continuing with the thought of vacuoles, their main function is twofold in, let's say, animal cells. Two functions in animal cells include the fact that we often see food vacuoles, and we also see what are known as contractile vacuoles. Contractile vacuoles. Food vacuoles are exactly what they sound like but they help promote what is known as a process called phagocytosis. This is a great word. I love breaking down this word. This word, this prefix phago, means to eat, literally means to eat. Cyto refers to a cell, and then is or cis means a process. So this literally defines as cell eating. This is how a cell eats, and its eating is encouraged when, let's say, phagocytosis occurs, when, let's say, a cell engulfs uh, a food particle. That's an example of phagocytosis. Cell engulfs food particle, that food particle will be phagocytosized, and then it will be put into a food vacuole. This is a way that the cell eats. Contractile vacuoles are a little bit different. These are um, Vacuoles that are used uh, in usually unicellular eukaryotes. So unicellular eukaryotes uh, will often have contractile vacuoles because these unicellular eukaryotes are usually found in water. And what they do is they use the contractile vacuoles to contract, to pump out excess water. This pumps out excess, all right, H2O. So, in addition to these functions, plants also have a major role and major sort of reliance on vacuoles. And you will understand now why plants sort of grow, the way that they grow. So plants use vacuoles for storage, first and foremost. And this storage includes storage of waste. It includes storage of water. It includes storage of toxins. And if, obviously, I don't mean storage in the sense that they're going to keep these toxins forever, but vacuoles provide a place in which you can put waste toxins and water for a, the however amount of time necessary before they are completely removed. So they're a good sort of stepping stone for that process. So basically, plants use it for great tons of storage. In addition, vacuoles are the reason that cell growth happens in plants. And it's a very interesting process. What we see is, step one, a young cell. We see a young plant cell, and that young plant cell will actually have many small vacuoles. So I'll write many small vacs, standing for vacuoles. What's going to happen is, those small vacuoles, small vacs, eventually will coalesce. This basically means to combine, so I'll write that down coalesce and combine. They sort of join together. They become one cumulative, one cohesive vacuole. And that eventually means that you create what is known as a central vacuole. Central vacuole created. And this central vacuole is what the plant literally adds H2O to, adds water into. And because it's now larger, 
that central vacuole, this hole is greater than the sum of its parts, that theme again, we actually increase cell size. So the size of cell is increased because of this sort of com com combining effort of putting all the small vacuoles together to create one large central vacuole. When you look at a plant, especially looking at it through a microscope, you look at its structure, one of the most emphasized structures are the so large central vacuoles of plants. So now we've concluded our discussion on the EMS system. We concluded it with the vacuole. We understand vacuoles follow that vesicle format <clears throat> of the endomembrane system. Functions in animal cells include food vacuoles and contractile vacuoles, and in plants mainly used for storage and cell growth. Hopefully now you have a better understanding of what the cell really is, especially in terms of its structure and what goes on within the cell. We've gone through a nice tour of the cell, specifically focusing on the nucleus, the ribosome, why cells are the size that they are. We looked at and touched upon microscopy, and we also finished off our discussion on cell structure by looking at the vast and expansive endomembrane system. Don't forget that the endomembrane system is here because it allows the cell to communicate intracellularly through continuous communication via things like vesicles. Hopefully you have a greater understanding and also, of course, a greater appreciation for cell structure.